Hey YouTube, I built this eight foot monstrosity about two years ago and I swore I'd never do it again, but I've got an adorable little niece who wants one for Christmas. So let's head out to the shop and see how many times I can burn myself. Cat tree. The only upside to this project is that it is dirt simple. Uh, it's a two by four structure that you can nail or screw together, whatever suits you. And you're gonna cover it with carpet, sisal rope, and assortment of things that will cover any construction mistake you wanna make for the most part. I have three inch, just sort of all purpose Phillips head screws. Yes, drywall screws will work just fine for this. First thing I'm gonna assemble is the skeleton for the base of the cat tree. It's two long two by fours with two spacers on the ends. I'm pre-drilling for these screws only because it turns out it's actually faster to do the two-step process than to wait for the impact to drive the screw into uh, the wood with no pilot hole. Base of the tree gets a simple plywood cover. Really all you need is a substrate for the carpet so it doesn't have to be anything good. A couple of brads is more than enough. All right, so in the drawing, there are a couple of posts that go up to support the various cat beds and whatnot that are on here. Those posts actually go through this top layer of the base so that they can attach to the two by fours that make up the skeleton directly. But typically what I'll do is I'll take the posts and I'll just set them on the inside, mark around them, and then I'll drill out the corners of where I need to cut from the bottom and it'll be easy for me to just connect the dots from the top. You don't really have to mark this stuff out on the top. You can just start at your holes, which you know are catty corner from where the two by fours meet in that same corner of the base, and you can cut straight until you hit something, frankly, that's, that's hard to cut. It means you've hit the two by four. Okay, with the holes cut in this thing, you're gonna be real tempted to start putting your uprights in. Don't do it. This base is a whole lot easier to cover with carpet if you do it before it has a bunch of sticks sticking out of it. Hey, spring clamps are your friend when you get into uh, dealing with this carpet because they make a great way to kind of tack it in place where you want it while you tack it in place. And the actual adhesion of the carpet is a two-step process. Step one is to physically attach the carpet to the wood, which is a job for staples. You don't have to get super close to the edges of the wooden frame because we're going to come back and we're going to hot glue that down. But where the carpet just folds over a corner, you want to kind of massage it with your, with your thumbs, give it a nice pinch, kind of form the carpet to the corner of the frame, and then staple that pretty much as close as you can. All right, easy part's done. Now the bane of every carpenter's existence, the corners, what to do. They've got way too much carpet to consider folding it up the way you would do a, uh, a Christmas present or something like that. So I'm gonna have to cut some of this out, but which one do I cut first? The way I like to do it is I like to cut the carpet along this direction first uh, so that I leave the flap attached to what I'm gonna call the show surface, as it were. Um, that way, if I get my cut off just a little bit, uh, then I can leave the gap rolled around the side of the, the base or the leg or whatever it is, as, as opposed to having it, you know, front and center. With the first cut made, you can staple the side down. Then you have to go back and uh, it's moment of truth time. You've got to cut these flaps off of the front. And basically what you want to do is you want to cut them so that the white backing on the carpet exactly lines up with the other side right here. Uh, this is the, the, the classic miter joint that's hard to cut perfectly in wood. It's just as hard to cut it perfectly in carpet. But don't fret, it doesn't have to be quite as perfect. Because we're gonna come back and we're gonna run a bead of glue up here. And uh, if there's a little bit of white showing, we'll just smash the carpet down into it. The edge of this needs to be secured continuously along the length of the wood. And hot glue is really the best way to do that. And I'll tell you right up front, it's gonna take a lot of glue. So if you're trying to do this with a craft store glue gun, you're gonna be a while. Uh, you need something that is at least 100 watts in order to melt the glue fast enough to keep up with what you're doing. The process is simple enough. You just get the gun down in here and run a bead of glue right along the edge and kind of fill in that crack. 
If you get to a spot like I've got right here where uh, the staples down there are ways, you're just going to have to put in a lot of glue in order to get it all the way up to the edge. Okay, so you managed not to burn yourself gluing down those edges. Here's a much better chance. These corners are largely held in place because of all of the staples and the fact that we've got this edge glued, but they don't look very nice. In order to make them look nice, you need to get in there and squirt some glue right up the seam. And then the good part, you get to take the fibers of the carpet and shove it into the hot glue. But once the glue dries and you trim off the curlies, you end up with a corner that looks pretty darn good. Right, once the hot glue has completely hardened, and I mean completely hardened, if you try to do this with soft, sticky glue, you will make a mess. This is a good time to bust out your disposable razor knife because you're gonna be cutting through the glue that squeezed out over the edge while simultaneously trimming off the carpet flush with the wood. And last but not least, we gotta cut out our holes, so just take the plunge, stab in there, and cut this away much like you would do with a jigsaw. And then once these holes are cut out, the edges of them need to be glued down too, but you don't have to worry about stuffing the fibers down in there because the post is gonna cover up that edge. Okay, with the base complete, our next horrifying step is to carpet these upright posts. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark three and five eighths inch up on all sides of these posts. That's how much we don't have to carpet. That's the part that sticks down through the base that will ultimately attach to the subframe. I'm gonna save myself one bend and leave the seam in this carpet right along the corner. And the tops of these posts don't have to be carpeted. They butt up against one of the, the cat beds. So I'm just gonna leave this carpet there for now and I'll cut it off flush once the whole thing's done. Feed a glue right down the seam and a little creative fluffing of the stray fibers and uh, eventually you're gonna be hard pressed to know which one of these is the seam. Okay, with the uprights all carpeted, we can see about getting them mounted to the base. I'm gonna actually glue these in place because my screws are three inches long and uh, they will just barely poke into the carpet from the inside out, so glue and clamps. So there's our basic frame for this cat tree. It's all glued up and screwed together and it is rock solid, which is, which is pretty important because remember there's gonna be uh, critters climbing and jumping around on this thing. You really don't want it moving around. With that out of the way, we can turn our attention to these various round and half round beds. And that really is the number one question I've gotten about the big cat tree that I made for our house, which is where in the heck do you get cardboard tubes the right size to be the shape and frame of these things? Right here. This is a concrete form. Pick it up at uh, any Home Depot, Lowe's, or, or other place that sells construction supplies. This 12 inch nominal diameter tube is actually only 11 and 5 eighths outside diameter, which just by a strange coincidence happens to be exactly the dimension between these two posts. The design for this particular cat tree has three round beds where the opening faces up. In order to make those round beds that sit flat, I need to cut about a four and a half inch section off of my four foot total tube here. Now, since I have a bandsaw big enough to do this job, that's where I'm gonna cut this tube. But don't worry if that's not the case for you. When I made the one that's in the house, I just wrapped blue tape around the tube in order to form my cut line, and I used a jigsaw to cut it. Now, certainly the solid bottoms of these cat beds don't have to be anything special, uh, but they do have to be solid enough to hold their own weight, uh, cantilevered out uh, with a cat sitting on it, you know, attached over at one side. Yeah, I just freehanded these circles over on the bandsaw. If you have a circle cutting jig and you feel like busting it out, by all means, but uh, don't bother making one for this project. I usually end up using staples for this, largely just because I have the stapler out. You're gonna start by cutting a piece of carpet to length to exactly go around the outside. And then take your carpet and, and roll it up inside out, small enough that it goes inside of the bed without you know, getting against the sides. And you're gonna start gluing opposite where your two ends of the carpet are. I'm gonna let that fully harden before I come back and try to do the rest of it because I'm gonna have to tug on it a little bit and I don't want it to come off. Once that's set up, you can start working your way around the bed you want to head for the inside piece of carpet. 
For the other end of this carpet, what we're essentially going to have to do is we're going to have to cut a notch out to account for the fact that the inside diameter is smaller than the outside, um, and then leave the rest of it so that we get a complete cover the whole way around the outside. This is one of those sort of catch-22s. This would be a lot easier to cut if you could get the carpet clean out of here, but you never know exactly how much to cut until you start gluing it down and get it nice and tight. That gives me the corner marker that I need to cut to with either a knife or scissors. With that notch cut out, you should be able to come back and finish gluing down this to the inside, and it should line up exactly at least below the rim of the cardboard. There's one other thing you're going to have to do before you can fold that over, and that's make a relief cut here opposite where this seam is. It would be really, really nice if the carpet was cooperative enough to fold itself over here, uh, but it's, it's just too stiff. I guess you could muscle it if you had a lot of patience, but uh, I don't. But it's still going to require a little finagling and a little muscle, but now you should be able to fold this carpet over. All right, so now you can start gluing this carpet down, and I would highly recommend that you actually start at the seams um, because it's hard enough to get these things together when you can pull on all of the carpet you have. Uh, if you've glued everything else down and this seam doesn't come together, it's not gonna. Once your glue's all set up, you can run around the edge with a razor knife to trim off any extra carpet backing that you had there and some scissors to clean up the fuzzies. For the inside one, just use a piece of the cardboard tube to mark it out on the backing of the carpet and cut it out as best you can. Once you get the inside glued in, you can move to the bottom, and it's basically the same process, although you might want to use the actual bed as the template to draw on the carpet backing, because you need a piece that's uh, just a wee bit bigger than the cardboard too. Get it glued down in the center, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go around and essentially caulk the edge. You're going to put a bead of glue right here on the edge so that it glues this down, but then also gives you the ability to kind of mash the fibers together to hide that seam. The big tube gets carpet on the outside and on the inside. It frankly doesn't matter a whole lot which one you do first. I'm going to do the outside because obviously that's easier. Once the glue sets, you can take your knife and trim off the excess on the ends. Okay, you're going to be real tempted to trim the fuzzies off the end you just cut there. Don't do it yet. You're going to need those fuzzies to close the gap between the outside and the inside piece of carpet. Okay, as you might imagine, the inside piece of carpet is a much bigger hassle than the outside piece of carpet. Now, you can't do what you did on the outside. You can't cut it after you start gluing it. You just don't have enough access to it. So you're going to have to get it in there and you're going to have to stretch it out as best you can. Make sure you've got it pretty much exactly the right size. And you're just going to have to bite the bullet and you're going to have to pick a, pick a line on the backing and cut it there. All right, with both my edges safely glued down, I can smash the tube in the middle and I can start gluing this in. And of course, yet again, Trim with a razor knife. The U-shaped ones are the easiest of the lot. You're going to leave the seam right here on the bottom somewhere, middle, wherever else. You don't really have to measure it. So just take your carpet and start gluing to the inside, then we'll fold it over and worry about cutting it when we get over here. Okay, after what seems like about six months and 162 burns, the carpet is on, which means it's time for final assembly. This bottom bed just gets glued onto the carpet. The big tube gets screwed through the tube and into the posts and down into these posts. I've got some uh, 1 and 5 8 inch number 6 square drive screws. This U-shaped bed gets glued to the top of the tube and then screwed into the posts here in the upper corners. And then finally, the last of our two round beds go on tops of these posts. It is a really good idea to pre-drill these because you're putting a screw straight into the end of that 2x4, and it will split. Best thing you can possibly put on one of these cat trees is this manila or sisal rope. This is probably going to end up being largely decorative, but it does do a great job of tying together the seam between these two things. The real money maker with this rope, though, is the scratching post. And so there you have it, one cat tree. About a weekend to make, uh, not a full weekend as it turns out. The cost to build one of these things are a little bit funny, and it's an inverse curve from the cost to buy one. 
The commercially available cat trees get exponentially more expensive as they go up in size. Whereas if you're making it yourself, the cost increase is pretty linear. Basically, you're just paying for more two by fours and, and more carpet. So if you're thinking on the really, really tiny side, just go buy one. It's not worth all of the second and third degree burns you'll end up with on your finger. But if you're going this size or bigger, not only can you make something that's a lot higher quality than what you can buy, but you can save a few bucks in the process. Well, by the time you see this, it will have been delivered to its recipient. With any luck, the boo-boo will have been kissed, and the problem of how do you wrap this will have been uh, long solved. I hope you're having a wonderful Christmas, YouTube, and especially if you're going to grab that glue gun, stay safe.